Welcome to Ace Designs 107, I'm Yes in the Car Pack, you're the kings and queens. Today what I for you guys is a Photoshop and Cinema 4D tutorial showing you how you can make your own 8-bit styled render using Photoshop and Cinema 4D. The duration will be 3 out of 4 stars, 5 stars sorry, and no, the duration will be 15 minutes and the difficulty will be 3 out of 5 stars. And yeah, I hope you do enjoy the video. This is going to be interesting. Let's get straight into it. Welcome to the desktop. This is where the magic happens. We're going to get straight into this tutorial by opening up Photoshop. And hopefully you saw the intro of the video. And this is going to be what we are making. I'll just be showing you how to make this render. Not the background. But yeah, so... It shouldn't take too long, and hopefully you can follow along. And the next tutorial will be um, showing you how to make this type of banner. So I'll be showing you how to make the render, and then I can go ahead and straight away do this tutorial. So my subscribers will know how to do this awesome effect. So I'm really looking forward to this one because this banner looks amazing. So we are going to get straight into it by going to File New. And make the width 600 by 600. Press OK. And... Sorry, I just moved this one across here. And for the logo, we're going to be using the Synergy logo. So this is my icon pack. I have it at my store for one British pound. One pound, I guess. And as you can see, you have a lot of different content in here. And yeah, so make sure to pick it up if you'd like. However, I'll leave you um, I'll leave you a link in the description below where you can download the Synergy logo. And just drag the Synergy logo onto your document so you can confirm that it's there. We're just going to fill the background in with black for now. Just for now. Be using the bucket tool. And with this logo, we are going to press Ctrl T and center this one. I'm going to crop this... Um, <laughs> image by pressing C on my keyboard and holding shift while bringing the crop tool down also alt so something like that okay great so now we cropped it I'm gonna press ctrl A press ctrl V um, press ctrl D to deselect that second and fifth icon to center it and yeah so the next thing is we're gonna to go to image adjustments um, image size and change it down to 120 press OK and then go to image adjustments which one did I use? I forgot. Mode, sorry. Image mode, index color. Sorry about that. And we're going to press fat, flatten colors, but just delete your bad background. I know that you can't see it. If you press control I, you can see it. Doesn't really matter what color it is. Index color. And we're going to change the palette to local selective. And the colors is going to be 8. And we're going to press OK on that. Then we are going to go to image, image size. And then back to our normal size. Which was from the top of my head 220. Somewhere around there. And then see we get this little 8 bit style. Now this isn't totally accurate. But depending on how you go from image size to image size. So if you go from like 120 down to up to 550. You'll get different um pixel pixelation I guess so then wh what we're gonna do is we're gonna go to file um, image mode RGB color and now if we control click this layer thumbnail press M on our keyboard for the rectangular marquee tool right click and then do make work path the tolerance I'm going to do is going to be zero or 1 or 0 0.5 just something that's going to be very high tolerance because of we need to select all those different little curves and everything like that so the next thing is to go to file export paths to illustrator we're going to export it as a work path press ok and we're going to save it into a folder or destination on our computer where we're familiarized with. So in my case, it's going to be in a folder. And the file name that I'm going to name it is AI Work Path. Uh, logo Work Path. 
because that's what we are saving it as a work path an illustrator work path press save and yeah we don't need this anymore so we're going to open up cinema 40 and start to extrude it and i'm going to be showing you some of the settings that i like to use for my render so for the Lightroom that we'll be using today, it is Wiz's Lightroom. Now, a few of my subscribers hopefully already have this Lightroom because of I use it quite regularly in my content. But if you'd like to download it, there'll be a link in the description below. So if you've got a file open and open up the Lightroom in Cinema 40, once you have downloaded it, it should be ready. There we go. And then we are going to go to File, Merge, and Merge in our logo which in my case, it's gonna be somewhere around here. Just merge in that Illustrator work path, make the scale one, and we're going to press okay. Now go to this camera, click this little box to make it white. This is going to be your camera view. Now you have your work path. If you hold alt and do extrude, you've extruded it. And then for the movement, we're going to do it up to 90. Then just move this one closer to the camera so we get some nice little camera angles, I guess. And I'm also going to go to my scale tool and scale this one up accordingly to what I like. Something like this. And then for the um, material, I'm going to be using this blue material. Drag this one onto this and we should already have something okay. So this one looks not too bad and obviously it has a glow. We can edit the glow settings and that's what I'm going to be showing you. But before I'm gonna chuck on that material, I'm going to delete it off just for this and I'm going to press Control C, press Control V. Now I'll have that extrude. Now I'll go to caps, go to filler cap for both on this one and then do the steps three, 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 three. And then I'm going to move this one backwards with my move tool so I get that like kind of outline. And I can always change the steps at any point in time to get a thicker outline. This is just a little way that I have found to do this and you can do this multiple times. So you can do that again, move this one a little bit back and then go to eight. Eight or in our case, we went up five so we can go up five again and so on you can make the steps like that i'm sure that there's plenty of other ways but that's the way that i like to do it so now i'm going to shift click all of these extrusions and i'm going to right click and do connect objects plus delete actually i'm just going to right click and do group objects so then i'm going to just slightly grab up the rotation tool and rotate this one to the side a little bit so i get something like this i guess going and for the backward extrude, I'm going to also go down to the extrusion options if it's going to allow me to. And instead of 200 or whatever, I'm just going to change this one up because of I think that it's a bit too thick. And the same goes with this one. And also this one. So we should have something like this now. Okay, sweet. So now if we just preview render this one, we should get an idea of what the steps should look like in our final render. And I might move this one a little bit down the steps and then I'm going to start applying all the materials. So for the materials that I'll be using in this render, I'm going to be using the blue one, but you can use whatever color you would like. Actually, I'll use the purple one. So just drag on any glow material that is provided in the pack. And then under the material, just drag this on for each individual extrusion. Uh, I guess there's only one way just to drag and drop it. Okay, so now if you preview render that, you should see, be able to see your color. This one's more of a bluish purple, it's not really that purple, but that's okay. Actually, I might do a yellow, not a green. Ah, oh, that's lime, sorry. Okay, now just a preview render that. Such a yucky yellow. Really, Sawwiz? <laughs> 
and the lines that I see here hasn't really turned out perfectly, but as I said, just mess around with your scaling and see something that you like. Now this might take a little bit of while to render all the time, that is okay. Okay, something like that is looking not too bad. I might actually change this yellow color right up a little bit down to like... Like a real yellow. I know it looks green in this render, but... Jeez, it takes a time to render. Talk about rendering times. It's not that comfortable for a tutorial because I don't like cutting everything like that. And let's see if we can get to 45 likes on this tutorial. That'll be great, guys. Thank you so much. Actually, you know what? I'll just be using the blue for this one. It's because I've used it before and I know the settings and everything. Okay, so now we have our color onto this one. We need to edit the glow because the glow is a little bit too strong. So go down, right click on your material, go to glow. And we are going to change, just use this as a general outline. We don't have to render it all the time to get an idea of. Radius, I'm going to change it down to like a 2, it's okay. Now for the outer strength, I'm going to change it down to a 55. I think I used that before. And for the inner strength, 69 or something like that. See what I did there, guys? <laughs> so then we're going to go to the color. Right click on this little color here and then you can go to Fennel or whatever. Um, when I was learning, actually, this is a little interesting fact about myself. When I was learning... Um, Cinema 40, all the pros used finesse, but it's okay. I'm going to be using gradient today. Go against the flow, you know what I mean. And with this one, I'm going to just jot down the mix strength a little bit. And I'll be using this as a little bit of a guideline. Now, I think this is going to be okay. Maybe something like this. And now if we just preview render that with the glow a little bit lighter and we also have got that like gradient so we should get some a little bit of a grading on this. We should see how this turns out. Hopefully it turns out quite nice. And this Lightroom is just immaculate. You can see all the little details and everything like that. And I think it's a really nice Lightroom for free. A lot of designers use it in the community currently. So yeah, that's a li very nice little subtle thing. I think the glow is a little bit too um, light and I'll turn off the reflection. I might turn up the glow a little bit. Something like that. And I also will turn... Up that. So now if we just preview render this, this is how you really have to work with your renders, especially if you want to get something like what you're really happy with. See, like this one, I was really happy with that, but I spent a lot of time, a little tweaking and everything. So you can click off the video now, or you can find the best settings like I am now. So I might right click and go down to the glow. Might take off the glow might clear this one so now if I just preview render this one hopefully it's not going to take too much longer I should have just memorized the settings that would have been a bit easier <laughs> no. but yeah you could edit this render in Photoshop which I would recommend like making a new layer above here um, going up to your brush tool, changing up the size, I guess, to a little bit like this, and then just click oh, harness and shift click on that one, control click, and then just like make little adjustments according to the like. The selection, I guess, something like that, and then you can get like little outlines like that. But, yeah, so this one is looking pretty good. I guess it's very similar to this one. I might just right click and just bump down the settings a little bit. So like 80 on this one. And I'm also going to change up the color to something a little bit brighter. Yeah, something like that. And yeah, so that should be the final effect. 
And obviously you can go ahead and put this onto a backing and just straight away use this as like a wallpaper or whatever you like, especially if you're a big fan of retro to 8-bit style things. But yeah, thank you for watching this tutorial. If you did, please hit a like and also subscribe if you haven't already. And go down to your settings of this render. For the settings, just do 1920 by 1080p resolution 300. Save it to wherever you would like. The format's going to be a PNG, the outer glow we're going to apply. Also global illumination, ambient occlusion also on. And for the um, anti-analyzing, do best, 2, and then 4. And then yeah, that's all you have to do guys. Thank you for watching the video. If you did enjoy it, hit the like button. Comment below telling me what you thought so I can personally thank you below. And yeah, hope to see a lot of comments and likes on this one. Let's get straight back tomorrow with another video. Peace guys.